who here, please raise your hand, the ones of you who are currently dealing with cancer or are in the maintenance of a remission from cancer that you already had. Please raise your hand. So the majority of you. And, and tell me, uh, who of you is, is, is a family member of someone who has cancer? Okay. Uh, caretaker. Be caretaker of family members. Sometimes caretaker, but we're not in the family. So, you know, for most of you that, that you are dealing with that, you're already doing things, right? You're already doing all kinds of things. And uh, most likely most of you are uh, taking advantage of what Western medicine has to offer, right? So we have Western medical approach gives us very strong tools to find the neoplastic cells and kill them, right? We can do it through chemotherapy, uh, through radiation, surgery, we basically get rid of a big chunk of it, as much as we can, visually. And uh, ideally, we can target specifically the neoplastic cells. But most of the times, they're just a, a random attack, and uh, we count on the fact that the neoplastic cells, they divide very rapidly, so they're more susceptible, so they will give up before our other cells do. And then we try to handle you know, the, the impact in our body from that attack. And uh, in many, many cases, there's the right way to go. How can we, first of all, there's two, if we have an integrated approach to how we can handle our diagnosis, uh, we want to use those tools, absolutely. And then there's these two other things that we need to take into account. One is, can we minimize some of the adverse effects, some of the impact of that aggressive therapy? And the second thing is, like I told you, there is, if we have a, a cancer group of cells, one of the rationales is, okay, can we eliminate them? And another one is, can we enhance <coughs> the part of our body that is designed to eliminate them? Can we support the fighters inside? How can we support the immune system? You know, here you are going along your life and then something happens, you go to the doctor and then you're given the diagnosis. You have cancer. And then we have, you know, scrambling to, to adjust to the news. And one of the first things that comes, I mean, you tell me if I'm wrong, but one of the first things that, that my patients tell me that they do is they, they look at the statistics, you know? They, you know, in my, in my current type of cancer, my current stage, what are my chances? Where am I at, you know? You look at percentages. And Western medicine in, in, uh, in cancer therapy, we rely on statistics as, as a big measurement. But you have to understand that statistics are just a set of probabilities. So if you, in whatever statistical range your particular cancer is right now, even if it says, okay, there's 20% chance of survival in, in five years, or whatever that is, there is no contract that you have signed. There's nowhere, even in the fine print, that says that you are in the 80% that doesn't make it. There's no reason why you cannot be in the 20% that survives. And that's the same for any particular number that you may have come up with. So we want to use the words, you know, the cancer, for example, if you think of it, if you look at can cancer, the word cancer comes from crab. It was coined by, 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 uh, in the, in, by the Greeks. And the crab, so because if we, let me ask you something. If I, if you, when you hear the word cancer, what, what comes to mind? What, what do you associate that word with? Anyone? Zodiac sign. <laughs> What's that? Zodiac sign. So w when they tell you you have, you have cancer, you're thinking about cancer, you're thinking about the crab? That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Okay. Okay, great. Excellent. That's pre precisely why I want to encourage you. But I think you're a little bit of an exception. <laughs> You are the naturally good student. How about the other ones of you? Death. 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 Bad cells. Bad cells. Scared. Something wrong with me. Scared, right? 
Yeah, I mean, that's, that's really usually how. But, but, okay, so watch out the words you use. Okay, that's another little tip for, for today is if you have cancer, you cannot allow yourself to have your mind, your, the way you talk to yourself, just run wild. You, you have to stop yourself. Because now if you, are, if you are not aware of it enough, now after today you are going to be, that the words you use, the connotation that you associate that word with, is gonna create a tangible message in your chemistry and it's going to influence your immune system. And what we're looking for, right, let's keep the eye on the target. And, uh, we're trying to find different ways to lift the immune system, right? We're already doing all our treatments. So how can we get the, our, my immune system to, to be stronger? The way we talk to ourselves directly impacts our immune system. So we can either stop ourselves and use a different word, or we can change the association that the word left unchecked will arise, right? We talked about the word cancer, and so if we don't, if we don't think of it, then we're gonna have all these associations that we've talked about, right? Something wrong with me, fear, death. And so, uh, for example, okay, cancer also means crab. Crab, in, in the symbolism of crab, has to do with success. Isn't that interesting? Success. So here we have, okay, cancer, success. I can, I can direct my attention to think in success. Oh, so I'm gonna succeed, I'm gonna beat this cancer. Uh, another, another meaning of the word cancer is transformation. So, okay, as I said, when we're given this diagnosis, it's automatically, it's, a, it's an opportunity to transform our lives.